Hey friends, welcome back. This is Ashley with Uncommon Roots Homestead. And today it's time to check on and dig up our sweet potatoes. Let's do it. Also, I'm on my way over and we have so much eggplant. Look at this plant. I swear this plant has produced more eggplant than we know what to do with in our house. We've also clearly let these get way too big. This flower is about to open. This time of year, it's so easy to get distracted in the garden because so much is blooming and like happening. And it's like this weird place as a gardener where so much I'm like done, like tomatoes, do I they're still coming and I like am over it. I don't really want to process any more tomatoes. We're not really eating them fresh anymore, but there's still so many. It's such a weird time in the garden, but I get very easily distracted. But today, this is what we're gonna do. This is our goal. So I'm gonna go get a wheelbarrow and some kind of a not a rake, but like a pitchfork almost, to like dig down and get up. Having a broad fork would be great, but we don't own one. So um, I'm gonna go see what I can find, and then we're gonna see what is under all these leaves. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is hope that Liam doesn't knock you down. Okay, so what we want to do is find where like the main plants are, like where, where I first planted all of those, those are like the core. And so sweet potatoes like vine and they set new roots. Um, we're going to try to identify where those start. I, honestly, this is very intimidating for us. We've only ever grown sweet potatoes in containers. I left a review on our experience of that. I'll link it in the description below. Um, but. We didn't get a ton of sweet potatoes. So we were like, why would we grow these in containers again? Now that I'm on the other side of this, I'm thinking, man, it would be nice to just be able to dump over a container of dirt and know where the potatoes are. Um, but we're gonna just get started and kind of bring you with us as we go. But first I'll show you exactly what it looks like. Okay, so these are all the sweet potatoes. What I did is I'm, I just was like lifting this up to try to see, see these are the roots that we're being set into new places, right? Um, but there aren't any potatoes down there. I don't, I don't think. But anyways, so like I can kind of lift this plant and find where is his like core root going down. And I think it's right in here. So, and that makes sense because this is where these kind of all go. And see, I'm just trying to like lift them as I go to see like where, where is the core? And then I can see there's the mound there's the mound right there that we planted it into. So really we need to get to that mound and then lift it up to try to get under it. Also, I'm rocking my whispering little farm shirt. Go check Jill out. So, this is not for the faint of heart. I'm also wondering, I don't know. They feel small, but I'm gonna dig them up anyways. So, I found a cluster. I'm gonna try to get it. Okay, so I dug, and this is all I'm getting. Like, yes, these are sweet potatoes, but they're all split. They're not gonna be good. They're not gonna be good for, um, not gonna be good for storage. I'm not entirely sure what we should do at this point. Okay, so I dig up another one. I mean, these are not the worst but they're not great. It's times like these in gardening that I'm like, what do I do? Should I leave it? 
it's definitely been long enough. They're splitting, which tells me I probably should have harvested them sooner, but they're so small. Okay, so I'm gonna make an executive decision that these are not ready. Um, they just, there's not enough under each plant. They're, I mean, they're splitting, but also there's just not like two plants to give me less than two pounds of sweet potatoes is not right. So I'm gonna go ahead and give these a couple more weeks. Um, I have about two weeks before I really need to get my garlic and onions in. I'm gonna give them that two weeks and then Kevin and I will come out here and just, it is what it is. We'll dig them up. I don't think they're gonna get worse than they are right now. Um, I mean, we're talking like, this is definitely not ready, right? Like, I have to cook, like none of these are gonna be able to be stored. See how much it's like, see how much it's cracking. So, I'm gonna pause. I did a little bit of damage, but only to the back section, so just gonna let it be. This is gardening, right? Sometimes everything goes as planned, sometimes it doesn't. I think that next year I need a better plan, and even this year when I go to harvest, I need a better plan. What I'm thinking right now is that we're gonna bring some scissors out. Kevin and I will both be here. He had to take the kids because they were getting a little un unruly. Um, but I think next time what I'll do is clip everything so I can really see and then just start digging all the plants up. I do need to go get a little basket to put these potatoes in. I actually, I have Isla's little basket here. They might, they might fit in this tiny little guy. little bit of damage but there's a lot left that I didn't even touch also in my experience sweet potato vines are super resilient so I don't even think they're gonna mind that much that I trampled them and pulled two plants up I mean I pulled two plants up of about 50 slips that I put in so <sighs> it's just frustrating because I knew that those sweet potato slips were not good when I got them they were like on the verge of death and I kept them and I put them in the ground I did email the seed company and they just never got back to me and I thought they were gonna die I thought they were gonna die it was like two months and then all of a sudden they came to life and they started growing but now it looks like the problem might be because they were so stunted at the beginning their roots right like sweet potatoes take a certain amount of time to grow fruit and these are like splitting, like it just seems like maybe that had more of a long-term impact than I thought, which it's just a bummer, you know, when you grow something and you're really excited about that, but, and especially with root vegetables, because it's like, you don't know what's happening beneath the surface until you go to harvest, um, which like can feel like it takes forever. We're also about to get a storm and I should really take this time and harvest everything that's ready to be harvested. Like all of those eggplant I was showing you. We have some peppers. Peppers usually are okay though. If they get a lot of rain, they don't, they don't split as much. Um, but there is, there is some stuff I really should harvest. But now I'm just irritated. I'm irritated at the sweet potatoes. Ah, but don't let it steal your joy working on speaking of joy look at how stunning those are and I swear if this trombonzino squash just will not stop like look at this it's growing like new little baby fruit right there this is young that's young this guy's young like what in the world? It's just like, there's tromboncino squash for days. If you are not growing tromboncino squash, you need to. Like this could feed every family so much. And look at, I have so many down here. I have at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that are like ready to harvest and already hardened off as winter squash. Another probably eight that are still young. Goodness gracious, oh, I got this guy. 
They're everywhere. Craziest thing. Even though it's a little bit of a disappointing evening. The temperature is perfect here in the garden. It's probably 75. It's overcast. There's a slight breeze. It's quiet. This is why I love this space. The radishes are starting. I need to come through and thin those carrots. This kale is getting big enough. I could start harvesting this as baby kale to eat. Hmm. It's good. You run the risk starting your kale when I did that. It gets a little better because it's still pretty hot out, but it seems like this one's doing okay. I need to come out and harvest some to start using it so that it doesn't get too big. If you're gonna har if you're gonna grow and harvest kale as baby kale, you don't want to let it get too established. It'll start like choking each other out. You want to make sure you cut and let it come again. So I gotta go out here and do that. It's really good. Speaking of things, I need to get out here and do. Really need to weed the asparagus bed. <laughs> Most of the asparagus looks really good. We have some dead areas like here. There's nothing here. Um, it didn't make it, the asparagus that was in these sections, but for the most part, there's a ton that's growing. And honestly, we probably could have cut on this this year. Like, look how big that is. Super established. They were three year crowns, but it's really good to let them get established in the ground before you start harvesting. I do think though, because like because they grew so well this year and seem so established that next year we will just start eating on them. Um, we just won't eat every one. You wanna let some go to, I think it's called ferns, but basically go to seed. Also, asparagus was one of the first things I wanted to get in the ground here at this property. Mostly because, you know, I talk a lot about the annual garden um, I, and I call this a potager garden, which potager garden is a kitchen garden and it's really the marriage between annuals and perennials. And this space, though the annuals might seem like they overtake the space, there's actually a lot of perennials here. I have my artichokes, I have my asparagus, I have all the fruit trees, I have the berries, um, and then I have the flowers. So I have roses, I have dahlias, I have hydrangeas, I have gardenias. Like, I have all of these perennial foods and beauty that is ultimately just going to come back every year which was something i really wanted and i want to continue to do in this space so um we're not done adding perennials i want to add more next year is going to be like the year of the berries i want to add lots of berries i want to put some muscadines on our fencing muscadines grow wild in our area um, and so they make a really great like fence dressing i guess you could say so i'm going to put some on the fence that runs up the side of the property um, like I said, I want to do more blackberries. I want to do raspberries. We have wild blackberries that grow on the property, but wild blackberries tend to be really small, really sour. I would love to grow some like big juicy blackberries. So those things are still coming. We'll probably do more fruit trees. I'd really like cherry trees. Um, I'd love a um, mulberry tree, Kevin and I. Um, mulberries are so special to us and I will share that story another time, probably when we put the first mulberry tree onto this property. But. Um, things like that I want to continue to add to this space to make sure that you know having an annual garden is great but it is not super sustainable right like you have to save seeds you have to sow them again it's a lot of work when you have a perennial garden or a mixed garden it really becomes this beautiful self self-sustaining place where year after year these plants are getting stronger and they're growing it's one of the reasons that I love the herb bed so much is that is just gonna be a vision of beauty year after year after year. And a lot of annuals can act like perennials if you let them go to seed and kind of reseed themselves. So there is there is that. <laughs> Ooh, and my passion vine. That's a perennial. Look at this, friends. Three. Three roses. Do you think he'll climb? You gonna climb, buddy? I guess I'll walk down and see what the family is doing. I 
I'm definitely type A. I'm a three on the Enneagram, which means I like things to go the way I want them to go. And I like to feel accomplished and I like to accomplish goals. And so whenever I have my mindset on something like a goal and I can't accomplish it, you know, like the sweet potatoes, I can't help but feel like I failed. And I know I didn't. I know that we're just gonna wait a couple more weeks. And you know what? If we dig those sweet potatoes in two weeks and they're all split and not able to be stored and it just doesn't work, it won't be the end of the world. You know, we'll wash them, we'll dice them, we'll can them, we'll eat them. It's gonna be fine. But right now, right in this moment, I'm a little bit irritated. <laughs> but I hear my family having lots of fun, so let's see what they're doing. But when your family is having this much fun, can you really stay irritated? Round and round and round. Friends, thank you for joining us today. You always have a space in my garden, even if we don't get any sweet potatoes. Follow us on Instagram, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Until next time. <laughs>